Hello, love. Welcome to Feeling Fridays here on the Libran Key. These are messages, soul support messages for the highest and greatest good and in the highest and greatest truth of the empath journey and the empath collective here on Mama Gaia. Know that if this message has found you or you have found it, that there is something here for you. That is always the intention that I put into these messages. For those of you returning, family, thank you for being here. Sending you so much love wherever you are. And for any one of you who are finding this message for the first time, or maybe finding it again, who knows? I don't know why that came to me. Actually, I think I do now that that thing <laughs> came out, um, which I feel we're going to touch upon in this message. A very warm welcome to you. A very warm and loving welcome to you in this space. This is going to be a bit of an energy update for the Empath Collective. This is the timely aspect of this message. But know that these messages are timeless so that whenever you do discover them, through, you know, call it divine intervention, they're, wow, they're just bringing in a whole bunch of stuff now. Please pay attention to that is what they're really wanting to bring in for that because it feels as though some of us are almost in a, in a wasteland feeling of sorts. And I use that in quotation marks because as I was getting the deck ready, the decks that I will be asking through as well, closer to the end of this uh, message, I was actually guided to prepare them a little differently this time for this reading. I will be asking and am asking through the Rose Oracle, okay, and also the Tarot Original 1909, Pamela's Genius, the Rider Wade Smith. So as I was getting them prepared, these two cards popped out of the deck. And they guided me to keep these cards out. And I will show you the bottom of the deck as well. But while I was shuffling, I did see the cards. The, one of the cards from this deck called, I believe it's Wastelands, kind of flip over. Okay. And what I was being shown by Spirit and the Venusians coming through, specifically they're saying to me the Venusian... A galactic council or the emissaries more specifically because we don't want to get you know too kind of pent up on words here because they're actually directing me to the fact that there are certain things words titles that are being inverted currently within the spiritual community so please be aware of that okay please feel into the feeling and the currency of the feeling the currency of the energy is what they're giving to me right now as opposed to the names, all right? Oh, that's so interesting. They're giving me the analogy of a name that we have for a person and how you can meet many different Pauls, for example, or many different Christinas, for example. 3.33 on the timer, as I say that, they're really wanting to bring that home, and they're reminding me of the energy, the, the foundations of the universe through 369, the numbers 369, okay? This is all very... Um, there's a lot of coding in what I'm saying right now. So if it resonates, if it pings, amazing. If it doesn't, amazing. This is probably going to be something that at some point will come up, either as a confirmation for you, or if you're watching this right now, it's a confirmation for you as well. They're going to be, it's interesting that they're, they're peppering some of the messages with this stuff recently. Okay, and this is a way for us to essentially tap into the highest and greatest truth of, especially with what's going on right now, I'm hearing the word illusion, the illusory. We're going through a lot of energies right now where we're peeling back the layers of illusion, essentially. I'm hearing the onion, the illusion onion. <laughs> okay, okay, so having said that, 
wastelands. What does that mean here? And I say that in quotation marks because there is a gap here between us believing that we are in a period right now where we're feeling like either we have wasted time on something or wasted energy on something, feeling like we are being laid out to dry in a sense, laid out to, what's the word here? Please put that in the comments below that the phrase that I'm looking for here, you know what I'm talking about. Um, laid to waste, laid to waste. Okay. If there's anything that comes up though, as I'm bringing through these messages, put them in the comments below. Okay. As I do this, I'm not just bringing through the messages. You are bringing through the messages too for yourself. And as you do that, you share that with this collective, with this family, by putting it in the comments below. Okay. So this concept, this feeling is an old way that's dying is what they're showing me because nothing is ever wasted. Nothing is ever wasted on the journey. And this is why they're bringing in the energy here of divine timing. And I'm also hearing when you know, when you, you know, right? Some of, some of this may sound very triggering to certain people, depending on where we're at on our journey, right? And one of the things that they're bringing up with this Wastelands card is the fact that it also has to do with integration. So you may feel like when you're in that Wasteland energy, it's interesting, they're showing me, um, I'm getting the Five of Cups energy coming through a lot with this from the tarot. Um, this energy of kind of desolation, this energy of not seeing that there are, you know, cups right behind you that are standing up right? Seeing the cups that have fallen over. And so much of this is with integration because the number two is really standing out here with regard to that. They also pop these cards out. Codes of the seeds, the blueprint is within you. Take the next step. And they're showing me that this is the next step from the Wastelands card. This is going deep, doing the inner work, the healing you need to do, tending to yourself, that is how, as if a seed has been planted, is what they're showing me, in the earth, in Mama Gaia, in order for it to rejuvenate. This is interesting. This is like a cocooning phase is how they're showing it to me. Where we go within, this is very divine feminine energy, bringing that number two back in here. Where we go within, in order to integrate, to be renewed, to come back out again, because it's these two cards. Plant yourself here with the codes of the seeds that popped out. Plant yourself here, integration, embodiment, and grounded action, because it's only from that place of integration that we can legitimately take grounded action. We've got rapture at the bottom of the deck to start here as well. This has to do with the body. They're specifically pointing me to that. Sensuality, love, devotion, romance, ecstasy, and pleasure. This is about, more than anything, the sensuality of the body, the senses, tending to the senses. This is what they really want to bring out specifically from this card, okay? And that means nurturing yourself. That means tending to your body, okay? So I'm going to be popping some cards from that first. I'm working with Rose Quartz here and this Apophyllite Pyramid because these energies have come through together before with regard to the portal of the heart, okay? And accessing the portal of the heart space. Apophyllite has a very high water content in it, um, where it's interesting. They're also showing me the energy of selenite here too. That's coming through because they're also showing me, but they're showing me the water dissolving selenite. I just would like some clarification on that. Okay, so they're showing me a dissolving body. Like it basically, and when I say that, what I mean is I don't mean, oh my God, please. I'm, I'm, I'm being shown this card again. Um, I'm being shown uh, being one with the water. So this is one with your emotional integration. This could be physically, because we've got this rapture card at the bottom of the deck. This could be physically you taking frequent baths or being near bodies of water. Um, I'm actually being somebody, well, I'm being shown someone in the shower in meditative 
it, like in a meditative shower where we're cleansing and integrating, where we're asking the water to cleanse and integrate us, to help us in that, to assist us in that. If you're working with water elementals, the undines, um, I'm hearing the mermaids even. If you're working with that water energy, I'm also being shown someone out while it's raining, okay? And there's something about, and this is so interesting because they're bringing in the science here of negative ions and being in water and how this can be incredibly healing for us. It is a really simple practice. Please do not overlook it. It is incredibly underrated. And they're showing me also the use of salts in, in baths or, or if you have, if you, it is available to you being in salt water. Um, be that ocean, sea, salt, water, okay? Are there salt lakes? I don't think so. I don't know why that came through. They're just showing me the integration here of water and whatever is available to you, okay? Salt is purifying and it's also protective, right? Which is really fascinating because it, it does both, right? It kind of comes back to this thing, this energy this energy feeling of being so aligned to the truth of who you are energetically that you are your own protection. Okay, I'm going to end it there because I could go off on a whole other tangent. I'm going to start by popping some more cards now. Um, from the Rose Oracle, Mother Rose also wanting to come through for this. I was given at the beginning of this, this is connected obviously to the Venusians, but I was being given at the beginning of this, the symbol of the rose, the sacred geometry of the rose, and all the phrases or metaphors that, and similes even, connected to the rose. So this is another thing that we can really um, embrace during this time as a tool, as a support, to integrate uh, the dense emotions, the purging that's taking place, right? They're showing me the water again with the cleansing, the purging and the cleansing of this and the transmutation of these energies that are coming up for us because they're showing me this transmutation happening at the heart space. And so meditating on the symbol of the rose, the rose itself, if you have a rose garden available to you, going and meditating and observing the rose, communing with Mother Rose, if that, you know, if any of these resonate for you, of course, and of your own free will. Um, there's something in poems about roses, symbols connected to roses. Perhaps that's another confirmation as well. Perhaps that's something that keeps on coming up for you, okay? As I cut the deck, Temple of the Rose. So the Rose lineage is also connected to this. Ancient power, expression, activation, and scarlet codes. So they're directing me to more heart awakenings happening. But for that to happen, a lot of hearts are breaking. A lot of hearts are cracking open for that to be happening. Whispers of Mother Earth, creativity, ideas, inspiration, artist, writer, channel. Right now, so there's something connected to this symbolism, the sacred geometry of the rose, being able to channel and to write is specifically what they're showing me. They actually also showed me this right before I started recording with regard to, they want me to sh cut the deck one more time, with regard to journaling, having a journaling practice and being in the flow also, doing this near a water source or where you can hear water or meditate to the sound of water. There's something in that will help you to get into the flow of writing and creating and being a channel of your own higher self, of your highest and greatest good beings, guides, allies, okay? The wild rose, do it your way. Embrace your uniqueness, untamed. This is exactly where this is exactly what's happening right now. And it's been happening for a while. Do it your way. You know, you being your own protection. You being your own. That doesn't mean, again, you know, 
that we're not going to call upon support. Absolutely, we're going to do that. Or have that protection in place around us. But it's it's about not outsourcing that and being a sovereign being where when you're going about your day, you are being discerning and in alignment with your highest and greatest truth in order to navigate that and be your own protection, essentially, right? It's such a, it's like when you are, when you are firmly grounded, you are, and I know we've talked about this before, but it, they want me to go over it again. When you are grounded, when you are firmly grounded and rooted, you are more connected to your own divinity and to source. And in that, you are more connected to your own intuition. In that, you have more discernment as to whether or not the thing you're thinking is your own intuition or it isn't, right? And this is an ongoing practice and it's very connected to being grounded and very connected to being close to Mother Earth, being in nature, right? This had come out, yeah, here it is. Brothers of the Rose, Sacred Masculine, Honor, Protection, Support. Okay. Multiple uh, messages coming through with this. This is about calling in protection. This is about being your own protection. This is about the balance between the masculine and the feminine within each and every one of us. This could also be masculine energies, deities, beings that you work with that are around you protecting you, supporting you. I'm getting the energy of Horus coming through for this. I'm seeing a lot of guardianship energy with this, especially with regard to bird beings. That's what I'm getting. I'm seeing the eagle, I'm seeing the falcon, I'm seeing the hawk, I'm seeing the vulture, I'm seeing energies of protection guardianship. So for some of you, this might be a confirmation. Interesting. I'm seeing four corners, the energy of calling in the corners, the energy of protection and guardianship in that respect. I'm also seeing many awakenings happening with regard to this. And they're showing it to me within the masculine consciousness here on Mama Gaia. I'm seeing that happening with men, but I'm also seeing it happen. Wow. I'm seeing it happen with regard to women and the relationship between women women and men throughout history okay and they want me to end it there there is like a beautiful grandmother crone energy coming through this card as well this is deeply healing what's going on right now and it's connected to even mama gaia herself her own healing with regard to this sophia divine plan wisdom intelligence within and destiny yeah this is all part of the divine plan. And I just keep on seeing the number two. <laughs> this wisdom, this wisdom that is divinely feminine. Okay. I'm going to ask now, pop, that was fast. <laughs> going to pop some cards now from the, oh yeah, this is, yeah, there's that five of cups. Okay. Lots of, lots of inter integration being asked of us right now. I just want to acknowledge that because this is the tower card and the five of cups. All that was built on shoddy ground coming down, crumbling down. Okay. This energy of the tower is asking us to go deeper, much deeper. That's what the number seven is in order to bring harmony back. Okay. 
to the individual specifically is what I'm hearing here because this is card 16. This is key 16 in the tarot. The one, how they're showing it to me right now is the individual creative masculine aspect and the six being the energy of harmony, bringing that back into harmony. We're being asked to really rest and integrate at the moment. This five of cups, five being the number of opportunity through crisis, looking, and this isn't about being opportunistic, okay? This is about, you know, uh, without any form of consciousness whatsoever around it or morality for that matter. This is about being, seeing that everything is happening for you. That is the lens through which you grow. Otherwise you are in some form of victimhood consciousness is what they're showing me or self-sabotage even for that matter. Okay, please take whatever resonates here. So some of us may be mourning the good times that's a very specific message. Some of us may be mourning certain people that we knew or friends we had or relationships. There's a huge emphasis on relationships here because this number two keeps on coming through. But this is essentially part of what it is to grow, okay? And integrate. The black cloak that this figure is wearing here is about going into the void and going into the divine feminine with these two cups in the back behind this figure. Because synergy is available to you when you align to the truth of who you are. And I'm just getting this energy of inner peace, finding inner peace. This bridge is really... It's bridging that gap is what I'm hearing them say to me. Bridging that gap. Yeah, look at that. Five of Wands at the bottom of the deck. This conflict of spirit. Okay. I want to just pop a few more cards here because this is a huge confirmation with regard to... They keep on directing me back to the Rose Oracle in terms of this is what we need to do right now. Take the next step. Plant yourself here. Allow yourself time to integrate. Call upon protection. Understand that there's a huge rebalancing going on within each and every one of us, but also collectively with regard to the masculine to the feminine. And they just want me to pop one more card here going forward. Understanding that this is part of the divine plan. Wow. Yeah. Look at this. Two of Cups. Two of Cups. Eight of Pentacles at the bottom of the deck. Okay. This is about doing the work on ourselves. And doing the shadow work. Okay. Doing the integration work. Did I say eight? I meant seven. This is the number of going deeper again. Okay. Both sevens, right? The number of going deeper. We got a three and a two here. That's a five again. Big time changes going on right now. Big time changes going on right now. And what they're showing me here, I love to see this three of wands. So much of this is around relationships that we feel have gone awry. When in fact... They have played themselves out exactly in a way for you to reach deep within and find the truth, the truth for yourself. I'm hearing specifically inner truth. Uh, this is connected to wounds. This is connected to patterns, to things that we are here to transmute and grow from, okay? to be in this energy of the three of wands aligning. This is so interesting what I'm seeing. I'm, this is the first time I've ever seen this come through with this three of wands. Thank you, spirit. Thank you to the Venusians bringing through this information for us. Okay. This two of wands is coming through like the two sides of the self and the third coming into integration. And you see how this individual is standing right in between these two, 
they're showing me this card as a card of integration. And being on the right trajectory for that and not compromising your own spirit, not compromising your own soul essence is what I'm hearing. Your divinity, your truth, okay? Again, your highest and greatest good. That's how it's coming through. That is when your ships start to come in and they're, all, they're, they're showing me like they're already there. Those ships are already there. It's about alignment. It's about seeing all of these three wands side by side. But what's beautiful is that we're in the process of this. This is available to us right now to be standing in between these two groups, so to speak, right? Between the two and the one, looking in a different direction, as opposed to looking down at what has not gone quote unquote right, okay? Or what we have lost, quote unquote, okay? This person is looking at what they are gaining. So there's a shift that's being asked of us. And are we going to do that of our own free will as sovereign beings? Okay. Last thing I'm going to say here is that this three of wands and the five of cups add to an eight. And this goes back to the energy of integration of self. And they're showing me again, the heart as a portal for this the heart as a source of transmutation for this. Remember that we are in an eight year. They're also showing me the eighth house in astrology, which is the house of transformation. It is ruled by Scorpio. It is about the psyche. It is about the deep waters, the depths, the underworld, going within to those darker spaces that are not inherently evil. They are just requiring that we shed light on those things so that they are not encapsulating or overcoming us in any way either. Okay, I'm gonna end it there. Thank you, Spirit. Thank you to the Venusians for bringing through this beautiful message of support for us. And I thank you for being here with me, for sharing your time and energy with me in this space. And I am sending you so much love wherever you are in love and liberation, always.